Welcome back. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. It's been an abnormally mild winter, so I'm sure you've gotten your first rounds under your belt here in 2012. I'm looking forward to another great season of golf tips on Sports Central. And today, the first moment thing we're going to work on is what everybody struggles with. First tee jitters. Two of the greatest golfers of our time, Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus, both struggle with first tee jitters. So I'm going to give you two of the tips that I give my players when they get ready for a tournament or a big round of golf to get ready for the first tee jitters. There we go. The first thing we need to understand is that as you get on that first tee, you're a little nervous. So the big muscles across your chest and in your legs are going to be a little tighter than you'd think. So you want to make sure that you get behind the golf ball because that is the first fundamental of the golf swing is the full 90 degree turn loading your weight behind the golf ball. So if you can stay slow, finish your backswing, and then swing to a follow through position in balance facing the target, we're off to a great start. The second point of overcoming first tee jitters is to know the golf course you're playing. I'm here on the first tee at West Haven Golf Club and I got a bunker on the left, I got three bunkers on the right and trees to the right. The bunkers are 270 yards off the tee. So I'm gonna choose to hit three wood because the hole is only 420 so I can't hit my three with 270, so I'm gonna be in the widest part of the fairway and it offers me no trouble that I can get myself into. This is gonna give me the maximum chance to get off the first tee with the best results and give myself a great chance to go for the green in two. So remember, the two things to help you overcome the first tee jitters. Number one, know your golf course. Know where the trouble is, and if you don't have to hit driver and you can hit three wood, it's gonna help you put it in play, keep it in the fairway. And number two, remember, it's the first tee, you're gonna be nervous. So take a deep breath and remember, take it back, turn back until you can't turn anymore, follow through facing a target in balance. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teacher Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, Director of Instruction here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. You know the average golfer hits less than three greens in regulation for 18 hole rounds and that can lead to potentially high scores. Today I'm going to show you three different shots from around the green that are going to take strokes off your score. So here we are. I'm 50 feet from the flagstick. This is my third shot on a par four. I can get this up and down. I can save a par. Conventional wisdom said we need to take an eight iron hit a little bump and run. So that setup, like all short game setups, has a narrow stance, the weight a little forward, and we're just going to try to land it just barely in, short of the green and let it run down to the hole. The next choice is the sand wedge. The sand wedge, why is that a good choice? Is because it has bounce, and bounce won't let the club dig. So all we have to do is hit the earth. So the only difference here is we'll have a little bit of wrist cock in the back swing, but we'll wait to be forward. And it, gets, it carries all the high grass, lands onto the green, and gets that close to the hole. But one of my favorite shots and especially for people that shooting over 100 and don't feel good about getting the ball up in the air, is take a fairway wood or a hybrid, grip all the way down to the shaft, get real close to it like you're hitting a putt, and then just putt your hybrid. The sole of the golf club won't let you hit it fat. That's why it's a better choice than the putter. It has a little more loft and it gets it up in the air quicker. Remember these three shots the next time you miss a green, they'll help you get up and down and save more pars and reduce your score. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Tune in next week for another tip to improve your game. Hello up there. Shoot a flare up by the flag so I can see where I'm going. If you ever find yourself in a super deep bunker, you kind of feel isolated from the world. You can't even, I can't see anybody on the green. I'm so far down. But I'm going to show you how you can get out of this mess in one shot. First thing we're going to need is the highest lofted club in our bag. For me, it's 62 degrees. So I'm taking my lob wedge. And the most important thing about the lob wedge or the sand wedge is that it has bounce. And the bounce is the back part of the wedge that prevents the leading edge from digging, allowing the club to skid through the sand. Very important because we need to hit the sand, not the ball in here. So we're going to open the face up because we need to add loft to get the ball out of here. And we're going to swing with a full swing, full back swing, full follow through. And if the sand gets out, the ball gets out. Very important. Okay, here we go. 
We're going to really open the face, move the ball forward, and make a big full golf swing. If the sand gets out, the ball gets out. So just remember, open the face, move the ball forward, big full swing, sand gets out, ball gets out, we're having fun. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional, and I'll see you next week for another tip to take strokes off your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at the Golf Academy at West Haven. What you've caught me doing is lasering a bunker in the middle of the fairway here on a par five. One of the biggest mistakes my players make on par fives is choosing the heroic route of bombing a drive that lands them more double bogeys and triple bogeys than pars or birdies. I'm going to show you how to use proper strategy to tear apart a par five for an easy par or a routine birdie. So what we found is that the bunker in the middle of the fairway is in my distance that I can hit my driver. And that makes the fairway 17 yards wide. So I'm going to choose to hit three wood where the fairway is 55 yards wide. So here I go. So as you can see, I've landed just short of the bunker that I was trying to miss. I'm 240 yards out. I do have a club in my bag that I can hit 240 yards, but it brings a lot of risk in the play, both bunkers short, a severe slope to the left, and severe slope to the right. I'm choosing a seven iron, which I hit 165 yards, that'll put me right in front of the green and give me an easy wedge shot into the green. We've played smart to here, but we got a pin that's in the front of the green, right over a bunker that's just teasing us to go for it. We gotta continue to play smart. I'm 75 yards to the hole, but I'm 80 yards to the middle of the green. I got a club that I hit perfectly 80 yards. Let's see if we can execute. See it? Feel it? Trust me. So as you can see, I have a 10 foot birdie putt and not once in this hole that I bring risk or stress into play. A fine example of how brains over brawn can take strokes off your game. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to take strokes off your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional, and I'm out here on the golf course doing a playing lesson with one of my clients, Matt Walter, and we've come across a shot that we have to face occasionally in the golf course, which we hit in the middle of the fairway, we have to slice it around a tree. Not easy, but I'm going to show you the fundamentals to do it. The key to the shot is in the setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Matt aim to the left of the tree behind me. We're going to set the club face and aim it more toward the flag stick onto the green. So Matt, go ahead and set up to it for me. He's going to aim his body down that yellow stick and leave the club face pointed out to the right. Swing toward the yellow stick. excellently done. So remember, when you get this shot, we have to slice it around a tree. Aim the body significantly to the left, leave the club face pointed in the direction of the hole, and swing where your body is aiming, right down the yellow stick, and you've sliced it around a tree for another birdie opportunity. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teacher Professional, and I'll see you next week for another tip to take strokes off your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at the Golf Academy at West Haven. And I have found myself in a position to hit one of the most exciting shots in all of golf, made famous by Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods. It's the flop shot. But I'm going to show you a simple method to pull off a pretty difficult shot. So really, the only situation in golf that requires the flop shot is when we are well below the green surface with not much green to work with between the edge of the green and the slope. So what we need to hit this shot is, one, the most lofty club in our bag. So for me, that's my 62 degree wedge. There are a couple of setup features that are gonna allow us to hit this shot. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the face a lot, almost completely flat to the earth. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lean our weight forward because we wanna hit the earth, not the ball. And a, a great feel for the shot is for you to use your bottom hand on the golf club. So for a left hand or the left hand, for a right hand or the right hand and keep the palm facing the sky the whole time. So here we go, face really open, weight forward. Let's keep that palm to the sky. Now the flop shot is a high risk shot and it takes a lot of practice to trust the technique, but the technique itself is very simple. Weight forward, 
face wide open and keep your back palm up the whole time. If you follow those simple fundamentals, this flop shot will be your friend and they can't hide pins from you on the golf course. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teacher Professional, and I'll be with you next week for another tip to improve your game. I am so foolish. I know better than to go for a par five and two that I can't reach. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teaching Professional here at the Golf Academy at West Haven. And I have left myself the most difficult shot in all of golf, the long greenside bunker shot. It is the most difficult shot because we do not hit the ball, we hit the sand. But now we have to be so precise on how much sand we hit because too much sand will barely get the ball out and not enough sand or no sand at all will hit a ball 50 yards over the green. So I'm 45 yards to the hole and this long carry greenside bunker shot. I've chosen an eight iron, the eight irons to make sure that we can carry the ball all the way to the green. Not the sand wedge, which we'd have to either hit, pick it perfectly out of the sand or we couldn't swing it hard enough to get it onto the green. So from here, we'll take a slightly wider stance than normal. We're gonna open the club face, which means just turn it this way you get your weight 60% forward and your hands back. We don't want our hands forward because the hands forward will either help us hit the golf ball first or dig into the sand because the leading edge will catch. So we get the hands back to make it skid through the sand. Weight forward, hands back. And now from here, just make your regular bunker swing with an eight iron. So just remember, the hardest shot in golf can be conquered. Take your eight iron, get in your normal bunker stance, hands back, weight forward, and make your regular swing and let more club carry at the proper distance. If you follow these simple tips, the hardest shot in golf is conquered. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teacher Professional. See you next week. Take more shots off your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teacher Professional here at the Golf Academy at West Haven in Franklin, Tennessee. And we are now facing the 40 foot putt that we see all the time. We call this a lag putt because there's only a very small chance of making it, like 2% from 40 feet. But the problem is that most golfers would three putt this putt more than they would two putt it. So the first thing we want to understand is, what are the fundamentals of rolling a lag putt close to the hole so we have a secure two putt? So the first thing you'll see when, you get, when you're watching golf on TV, especially Tiger Woods, Tiger always has his long putts where he's just swinging the putter with his back arm and just simulating a long stroke. Well, what he's really doing is imagining he has the ball in his hand and wondering how much arm energy would it take for me to roll the ball to the hole. That's all he's trying to visualize. So when he gets in there, after he feels pretty comfortable with his roll, he steps in to the putt. And now he has the speed in mind. The last time I interviewed Brent Snedeker on my radio show, he talked to me about when putting, he wanted to feel like he was gripping the putter as lightly as he could so that he could feel the putter head swing. So we're going to do a nice light grip pressure and simulate the arm swing to produce the, the leg putt that's going to lead it close to the hole. And hit your putt. If you follow these simple fundamentals of proper grip pressure and allowing yourself to visualize 